In the words of the good book, and behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Picture a man of stature, a ruler of the synagogue, a man named Jairus. His world is crumbling around him. His heart, heavy with grief and desperation, he finds himself at the feet of one man, Jesus. His plea is simple, yet it carries the weight of the world. My little daughter lieth at the point of death, he implores, his voice trembling with emotion. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed, and she shall live. Can you feel the desperation in his voice? Can you sense the hope that he clings to? Jairus, a man of importance, is brought to his knees by circumstance, humbling himself in a plea for his child's life. His faith in Jesus is unwavering, his belief in the miracle that can be done unwavering. This is not just a plea, it's a testament to a father's love for his child. A love that knows no bounds, a love that pushes him to believe in the seemingly impossible. It's also a testament to his faith, his unwavering belief that Jesus can perform this miracle. The gravity of the situation is immense. The life of a young girl hangs precariously in the balance. The atmosphere is thick with desperation, but also with hope. Hope in the face of despair, hope in the face of death. As we follow Jairus on this journey, we are reminded of the power of faith, the power of hope, and the power of miracles. We are reminded that even in the darkest of times, faith can light the way and miracles can happen. In the face of despair, a father's faith remains unshaken. As they journeyed, a woman with an issue of blood 12 years came in the press behind and touched his garment. This was no ordinary journey. It was a quest for a miracle. A desperate father, Jairus, leading the way, his heart pounding with every step. Jesus, the miracle worker, calmly following his presence alone, a beacon of hope. But there was an interruption. In the crowd, a woman, frail and weak, had been suffering for 12 long years. She was a living testament to human endurance, her faith unyielding even in the face of relentless pain. Her eyes fell on Jesus, a spark ignited in her heart. She believed, truly believed, that if she could just touch his garment, she would be healed. The crowd was thick, a sea of bodies pressing in from all sides, yet through the throng she moved. With a surge of determination, she reached out, her fingertips brushing the fabric of his garment. It was a touch so light, it could have been mistaken for a whisper of the wind. Yet, it was powerful enough to halt Jesus in his tracks. Immediately, the woman felt a change. The pain that had been her constant companion for 12 years vanished. It was as if a heavy burden had been lifted, replaced with a lightness she had almost forgotten. She was healed. In the midst of this urgent journey, a miracle had unfolded right before their eyes. This was an interruption, yes, but it was also a testament to the power of faith. A woman who had been suffering for years was now healed, her relief palpable even amidst the pressing crowd. Such is the power of faith and the miracles it can bring forth. This woman, once bound by her affliction, was now free. Her healing served as a beacon of hope, a ray of light piercing through the gloom. In the midst of chaos, a glimmer of hope shines through. There came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? A sudden chill descends upon the scene as these words, heavy with despair, ripple through the crowd. The once hopeful whispers are now replaced by hushed tones of sorrow. The journey, the anticipation, the sliver of hope that had been kindling in their hearts, all seem to be snuffed out in an instant. The news of the daughter's death hangs in the air like a dark cloud, casting a shadow over everything. The faces around are etched with sympathy and sorrow, their eyes reflecting the harsh reality of the situation. The onlookers, once hopeful, now question the purpose of this journey. Why trouble the master any further, they ask, their words echoing the despair that has gripped them. The sense of loss is palpable, the air heavy with the weight of it. But amidst this sea of despair stands Jairus, the synagogue ruler. His world has just been shattered, his worst fears realized, and yet there's a spark within him that refuses to be extinguished. His daughter may be gone, but his faith in the Master remains unwavering. Every fiber of his being is tested in this moment. The pain of loss threatens to pull him under, but he clings on to the one thing that's keeping him afloat. His faith. His faith in the Master. His faith in the miracle that he had sought. He doesn't let the despair seep in, doesn't let the sorrow drown him. His faith, his unwavering faith, is his anchor in this storm. Even in the face of death, faith does not waver. 
This is the testament of Jairus, a testament of unwavering faith, even in the face of the greatest loss. His story is a testament to the power of faith, to the strength it gives us to face even the most devastating of circumstances. His faith is his shield, his strength, his beacon in the dark. His faith is what keeps him standing, even when the world around him crumbles. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. With these words, a beacon of hope was ignited, cutting through the fog of despair that had enveloped Jairus. The journey to his home seemed to stretch on and on, each step echoing with the weight of anticipation. Upon their arrival, the house was shrouded in an air of melancholy, the grief palpable. But Jesus, the embodiment of calm amidst the storm, moved forward, his gaze steady and purposeful. The onlookers held their breath as he approached the lifeless form of the girl, their hearts pounding in their chests. He took her by the hand, a touch so gentle, yet so full of power. The room was deathly silent, the only sound being the soft rustle of his robes and the faint whisper of his voice as he commanded, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise, and then a miracle. Her chest began to rise and fall, the sweet rhythm of life returning to her. A gasp echoed through the room, eyes wide with disbelief, hearts overflowing with joy. The dead girl, now full of life, stood up and walked. To the utter amazement of all present, it was a moment that defied all logic, a testament to the boundless power of faith. The impossible had been made possible, the irreversible reversed, life had triumphed over death, love over despair. The miracle was not just the girl drawing breath again, but the restoration of hope, the rekindling of faith, and the affirmation of the divine power that has the final say over life and death. The room filled with a sense of awe, a reverence for the divine wonder they had witnessed. The air was thick with emotion, tears of joy trickling down faces, smiles breaking through the somber atmosphere. The miracle had unfolded, life had returned where it was thought to be lost forever. A miracle born of unwavering faith. And so, the story of Jairus' daughter serves as a reminder to us all. When faced with the impossible, when hope seems lost, remember this miracle, remember the power of unwavering faith. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. With these words, Jesus concludes an extraordinary event with a humble request, a request that speaks volumes about his character, his mission, and the nature of the divine power he exhibits. The miracle wasn't performed for spectacle or fame, but out of compassion and love. This is a crucial element in understanding the moral of our story. There's a profound lesson to be learned here, a moral that goes beyond the confines of this single event and speaks to the hearts of all who hear it. It's a lesson about faith, unshaken, unbroken faith. The faith of Jairus, who, despite all odds, believed in a miracle. The faith of a woman who, despite her ailment, believed in a healing touch. Both of them, in their darkest moments, held on to their faith, and it was their faith that made the impossible possible. But there's more. This story isn't just about faith, it's about life, the miracle of life, the life that was slipping away from a young girl, the life that had been drained from a woman for 12 long years. Yet, in the hands of Jesus, life was restored, renewed. It's a stark reminder of who holds the reins of life, of who breathes life into our mortal bodies. God, the giver of life a title that holds a depth of meaning. It's not just about physical life, but also spiritual life, the life that continues beyond the ebb and flow of our earthly existence, the life that is filled with love, joy and peace, the life that is promised to all who believe. This story, this miracle, serves as a powerful reminder of that promise. It's a testament to the power of faith, the miracle of life and the love of God. It's a beacon of hope for all who find themselves in the midst of despair. A beacon that shines brightly with the message that miracles can and do happen when faith remains unshaken. In the face of despair, hold on to faith, for God is the giver of life. Hold on to this truth and let it guide you through the storm. For faith is the key that unlocks the door to miracles, and life is the greatest miracle of all.